Well, good morning, family. Y'all doing all right this morning? All right, man. Amen. What a powerful time in worship. Uh, Let me rush to introduce myself. My name is Nick, and I serve as a pastor here on staff. I have the awesome honor and privilege to share with you all this morning from God's Word. Uh, If this is your first or second time here in the room or joining us online, We want you to know you're very important to us. So, BT family, let's give our VIPs some love, please. We love that you are here. If you could do us a favor, though, uh, text the word BTVIP to the number 97,000. That will give somebody from our staff an opportunity to connect with you in a different way. We we don't want to do you like they used to do us in the church that I grew up in. The church I grew up in, they, they would ask, Uh, If there are any visitors, and then you would have to stand up. (laughs) And then they would ask you, how'd you hear about us? And then some churches got fancy. They had a visitor's guest song. We don't have no guest song. We just got through singing. So So you might just want to text BTVIP (laughs) to the number 97,000. We would would really appreciate that. Uh, We want to continue our practice of celebration Uh, all of the amazing things going on in the life of our church Uh, so far this year, and and I can't say it precisely because uh, more numbers are coming in, but but I do know this, over 500 people have trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior this year through the ministry of BT Church. One lady stopped me. She said, I got to add one. She stopped me after last service. She said, I got to add one, Pastor Nick. I said, well, add it. She said, my mom got saved. I said, well, praise the Lord. Amen. And then so far this year, we celebrate 301 people have been baptized. They've gone public in their faith. August isn't even done yet. And uh, we're over 300. If you remember last year, um, last year, Pastor Chris had been, you know, praying and, 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 and set, setting the goal as 300. And last year, on the last Sunday of the year, we saw God do it. Amen? So I don't know what number he's going to come up with, but I know God can do it. Amen? <laughs> and so we're, we're, we're believing. We're excited. Uh, we don't, we don't want to take it for granted uh, that lives are being impacted through the ministry of BT Church. We are so grateful. We are in a new series called I Love My Church. Let me hear you say that. Say, I love my church. Love my church. Amen. I do. I love my church. I love the, the people that uh, God has called me to serve. I enjoy it. Um, it. It is our prayer that you walk away from this series and that you love your church. My assignment, our assignment is in Acts chapter 9. You can turn there. And, and we have, well, let me speak for myself. I have a prayer for this series. I think, I think the other ministers share this too. Uh, but if not, you know, we'll talk about it later. But here's my prayer. My prayer is after this series, the people of God here at BT get so inspired, get so full, get so passionate, get so on fire that the only response is for us to dig in and go all in for Jesus Christ here at BT Church. That's my prayer. Well, that's one of my prayers. My other prayer is this, that after this series, if you can't get passionate, excited, and you dig in and go all in, if you can't do it here, my prayer is that you get up and you go find a church where you can do it at. I don't want you to go. I just want to say that. I say that with L-O-V-E. I want you here, but I want you to be where you want to be. You see what I'm saying? And if you can't dig in and go all in here, like Pastor Chris said last week, Life is too short to be a part of a church that you don't love. Amen. And why would you come every week to somewhere where you don't want to dig in and go all in? Can you, 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 I'm just saying, think about that. 
Like, we don't take, like, you ain't got to come. We don't take it for granted. That's why we're grateful when you're here. So that's our prayer from this series, that, that we hear this series, we get inspired, motivated, we get full of the word, and we, we dig in and we go all in for Jesus here. And if you can't do it here, there are a whole bunch of churches down this street, around the corner, somewhere else. We're not trying to run nobody away, just, just hit it, but, but we got to go to war with who we go to war with, right? Amen. Don't you, aren't y'all like that in y'all life? I see some of y'all post. <laughs> I need the loyal people with me and, I don't know, you know, where my riders at? I hear y'all, y'all. Well, the church want riders too, amen. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Last week we kicked off this series and we talked about how the church that you should love should be focused on Jesus. The church that you should love should be focused on Jesus. Jesus is our fir- Christ is our firm. Fir- we don't just sing it. We believe it, right? Jesus is the focus of this church. This morning, we're going to talk about that the church you should love should be full of the Holy Spirit. The church you should love should be full of the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, Churches become full of themselves. They get excited about their history. They continue to lean on their legacy, and they fail to walk in the fullness of the Spirit. And, and could it be, and I, I believe that this is, this is a part of it, could it be this is why we have churches all over this country, we have churches all over the world. They are, they are beautiful buildings, but they are empty churches. Now they are sites for tours, but they are not sites for life change. And could it be that over time that church became full of itself and not full of the Spirit? And so this morning we're going to talk about the church that you should love should be full of The Spirit. Being full of the Spirit is something that is available to every believer that follows Jesus Christ. And here's what we believe here at BT Church, that we believe that there is one baptism when you are saved, when a believer is saved, when a believer comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that moment you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. One baptism But there are many feelings. How do you know this? Well, in the book of Acts that that we're going to read from today, uh, there are several mentions of believers being filled with the Spirit. When you look at the book of Ephesians where the Apostle Paul, who we'll talk about today, he encourages the church, people who are already believers, he encourages them to be filled with the Spirit, and, and, and this tells us this, is that there, there's one baptism, but there are many fillings that, that as we live this life, we have to make a conscious choice to posture our hearts to receive the fullness of the Spirit, the filling of the Spirit. Are y'all with me? You know, life can make you leak a little bit. <laughs> and so we've got to continue to keep our lives under the open fountain of the Spirit and be filled because we don't want to be full of ourselves. Let's, let's, read, let's read our text and then we'll preach. Did I tell you a verse? Okay, just making sure you're listening. That's verse 26 is where we'll be working from. It says this, when he, meaning Saul, when he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. Since they did not believe he was a disciple, Barnabas, however, took him and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that the Lord had talked to him and how in Damascus he had spoke boldly in the name of Jesus. Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He conversed and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the brothers found out, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church 
throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Verse 32, as Peter was traveling from place to place, he also came down to the saints who lived in Lydda. And there he found a man named Aeneas who was paralyzed and who had been bedridden for eight years. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up. So all who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Let's, let's pray and ask God to bless our time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We pray now for the next few minutes by the power of the Spirit. Let your word be clearly communicated. We pray that Jesus Christ is highly exalted and let your people be beautifully blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we talk about a church that you should love is a church that is full of the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? A church that is full of the Holy Spirit is a church that flows in the power of the Spirit. What does that mean? Because, you, you know, any churches in here, amen, I'm a churchy. I've been in church a long time. So we, we, we have phrases that we say, and, and, and we, we understand it, and we, we know about it, but, but sometimes you, you hear some stuff, and, and you're just like, well, what does that mean? Like, what, is, what does it look like exactly? How, how can I wrap my mind around it? So, so here's, here's what we mean. When, when we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, when we talk about a church being full of the Holy Spirit and, and the Spirit's work, here's what we mean. We mean this, that the Spirit works upward, inward, and outward for the purpose of making us more like Jesus and the purpose of drawing people to Jesus. That's what we mean. So when we talk about Holy Ghost power, the Spirit's power, we mean that the Spirit works upward, inward, and outward for the purpose of making us more like Jesus and for the purpose of drawing people to Jesus. And if you think of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's power, and it doesn't include making you more like Jesus, and it doesn't include drawing people to Jesus, then there's an incomplete view of the Holy Spirit. Uh-oh. <laughs> Experiences. Some of y'all, if y'all from the background that I come from, you know, people laying hands on people, people falling out. Some people in the church screaming and the ushers getting around them, helping them. Y'all, y'all, some of y'all didn't grow up in church like I grew up. It's all right. And I, hear me, I'm not making light of that. I, we believe here at BT Church that the gifts of the Spirit are active in the world today, all of them. We believe it. Okay? We believe it. But what we know about the Holy Spirit from Scripture, not experience, from Scripture, what we know about the power of the Holy Spirit is this. It works in the life of the believer to make the believer more like Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, he said, when the Spirit comes, he is going to testify of me. This is what Jesus said in the red letters in your Bible. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes, Holy Spirit is going to draw your attention to me. The Holy Spirit is going to remind you of what I said. So the Holy Spirit sounds like Jesus. And as a church, if we are full of the Holy Spirit, it will result in making the people in the church more like Jesus and drawing people outside the church to Jesus. Let's talk about it. Let's look at it in the text. We said that the Holy Spirit... His power works upward. It's, it's right here. I'm not making it up. Look at it in verse 31. So the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, the church grew. It increased in numbers. It grew. This scripture right here is my... I don't want to say ammunition, but, but it, 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 it kind of is for everybody who preaches against church growth. 
this is my verse right here. Because healthy things should grow. I'm going to just say that. I, I, know, I know some of y'all like, you know, hear me. I, I say this all the time. Every church is not going to be a big church. But every church full of the Spirit should be a growing church. Are you with me? Every church won't be a big church, but a lot of churches are smaller than they should be because the Spirit ain't moving there. Are you with me? And so healthy things grow as the church relies on the power of the Holy Spirit. That power works in us upwardly that we receive strength and we receive peace and we receive encouragement from God. Now notice this, the church is experiencing peace in unpeaceful times. How do you know this? Well, if you read if you read uh, Acts chapter 9 and you read about the conversion of Saul and you read after Saul is converted there in Damascus and he starts to preach in the synagogues, the block gets hot, word gets out, and now they want to kill him. And, and it took the saints... The saints of God, they got together. There was a Christian that had a house in the wall of the city. They let Saul down in a basket by a rope. It's almost, it's almost like a, a, a throwback to what Rahab did with the spies. But that's what happened with Saul. They tried to kill Saul. They lower him down in Damascus. Then we see he gets to Jerusalem and he starts to talk to the Hellenistic Jews there. And it tells us again that they tried to kill him. Again, but we see the church growing and experiencing peace. Why? Because our source of peace, strength, and encouragement, it never comes from the world around us. It comes from the God above us and the spirit that dwells within us. Are you with me? This is why, this is why. I just, I just got to say this. I'm, I'm going to say it now, and we're going to fix it later. This is why if we have believers who are too discouraged by what happens in the political landscape, if we have believers who get so overwhelmed and upset by what's going on at the Olympics that we don't focus on the strength and the peace and the encouragement that we have from the Holy Spirit, it shows that we need to be filled again. I ain't, I'm just I'm gonna just say it how I feel it. We'll fix it later. Some of us we not full of the spirit because we full of social media. I mean everything make you mad. Just we got to stand. We uh uh-uh, uh we stand. Uh uh-uh. uh. I can't believe. First it was the demon Nike shoes, and now then it was the Olympics, and then it was something else. Every we mad all the time, and just and 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 we not full of the spirit. Because we full of social media. I'm talking to myself. I'm not coming for y'all. I'm coming for us. <laughs> we in here too. But look at the church. It says this, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria, they had peace and was strengthened. And they had peace and they were strengthened. They had peace in un peaceful times. They receive strength in times that could shake the very core of strength. I mean, I mean, Saul was at the stoning of Stephen. Saul was there. One, one of their deacons that, that he, he, he died. And the church continued to thrive. Why? Because the Spirit's power, it works in us upwardly. We know where our source is. Amen. This is why every time, I'm, I'm just going, I, woo. I, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I get, uh, I get concerned fatigue. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Every day is something to be super concerned about. And. And this election, I'm going to just, this is wearing me out a little bit. That's why I had to unplug. I had to unplug from it. 
Because every four years, they said, this is the most important elect. And I'm like, y'all been saying that since I was two. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've been hearing that a long time. I think we're about to have, what, uh, 47 presidents? Right? I, I, I just want to put this in perspective, guys. 47 presidents. Okay, 47 of them. After each president is elected, you know who never gets off the throne? <laughs> I'm just saying, just think about that. It's been 47 of these presidential jokers, and each time Jesus is still on the throne. Are you hearing me? So let me ask you this. What's more important? I, I'm not saying don't be politically engaged. I believe in it. Register to vote. Know, know where your precinct is. All of that. Get your card. All of that. Do all of that. Vote. All of that. I'm not, I'm not telling you not to do that. What, I, what I'm talking about is where we draw our strength, where we draw our peace, where we get encouraged from. Hey, hear me. Hear me. Let's, let's lean in. Let's lean in. Hear me. Hear me. Nothing that happens in November is going to stop the church full of the Holy Spirit. And I want to be a part of a church that focuses on that. Amen? And so this church, the church is growing. It's growing. But the Spirit's power, it doesn't just work in the church upwardly, but it works in the church inwardly. That it works in the hearts of each individual member, and it works in the hearts of the collective. Look at it. Look at it. It's, it's right here in verse 26. When he arrived, meaning Saul, when he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him since they did not believe he was a disciple. Uh-oh. Now, I hear some of y'all. Well, Pastor Nick, they had a good reason to be skeptical of Saul. After all, he had letters from the Sanhedrin to persecute Christians. He, he was there as a witness to Stephen's execution. And now he wants to parade and storm into the church. And we don't know if he is with us or he, if he's still with them. I, I get it. I get it. You know, the Holy Spirit works in us. And as he works in us, he does something to our hearts. And, and when God begins to move in our hearts, he, watch this, and this is it. We, we, we stop seeing people based on who they used to be, and we start seeing people based on who God calls them to be. I get it. The church, the church had good reason. The church had good reason to fear Saul, but that is still living in the fear of man. But it told us in verse 31 that, that they were living in the fear of the Lord. Something had to happen, and I'll tell you what happened. Look at it. Look at it. It's right here in the text, verse 27. There's another brother. Brother Barnabas, it says, Barnabas, however, took him and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord. Do y'all see the Holy Spirit at work? If you don't see it, let me show you. Holy Spirit is at work in the life of Saul. He turns Saul from being a Christian persecutor to now being a Christian disciple. The Holy Spirit works, and he changes Saul's heart, changes Saul's life. Saul goes to Damascus persecuting Christians. He leaves Damascus as a persecuted Christian. That's the power of God at work in the life of the individual. Now Saul takes his transformed life, and he walks into people who may or may not receive him. Saul, just think about how devastating that could be. I mean, I mean, God has changed your life, and then you come to church, and those people are like, nah, you can't sit on my row because I, I, know, I know what you did, and, and, and I know how you used to be. We don't need to be a church like that, by the way. 
Amen. Because none of us want Jesus to put our life on pro presenter. That's the projector screen. Y'all don't, y'all don't want your life up there, do you? No. All of us have a story that people could hear about and not, wanna, not want us to sit on their row. Amen. But notice this. The spirit works in Saul's heart. Saul is converted, and because he's converted, he knows that he still needs to be connected to the body. Ooh, that'll preach right there. For all of these people, all of these people, well, I don't need the church to be a Christian. Let me, let me just say this. Saul saw Jesus. Saul saw Jesus on the road to Damascus and still knew that he needed to be connected to the church. I, I'm going to say this. Some of us don't even know all the books of the Bible. I'm just, I'm, come with me now. Saul knew all, you know, being, being a Pharisee of Pharisees, he knew the Old Testament. He knew the first five books of the Bible by heart. He saw Jesus on the road to Damascus and still that Saul so anointed that, 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 that received that heavenly call and, and that heavenly mandate to be an apostle to the Gentiles, that Saul early in his walk, he still knew. I need to be connected to the body. Some of us don't even know the books of the Bible, yet we will open our mouths and say, I don't need the church to be a Christian. What? Think about it. What are you trying to say, Pastor Nick? I'm trying to say this, that when the Holy Spirit works inwardly in us, it leads us to be connected to the body of Christ. So that's the Holy Spirit working in Saul's life. Now, the Holy Spirit working in Barnabas' life, remember, it opens Barnabas' heart up and his eyes. So Barnabas, he sees Saul not as a threat but as a brother. And in order for Barnabas to do that, notice this. Barnabas has to take the time to hear Saul's story. And Saul has to take the time to share his story. That's how connection happens. That's how connection happens. Somebody got to take the time to hear your story. You got to take the time to share your story. Saul shares his testimony. Barnabas hears his testimony. Barnabas takes Saul, and then he takes his testimony in with the other uh, other apostles, and he says, hey, it is possible that God has saved this guy. I know that I can vouch for him because he's seen Jesus, and the Spirit's power in his life is real. People don't know that God's power at work in your life is real because some of us, we won't even share our testimonies. Amen. We all have one. If we're in Christ, we have a testimony. Amen. I have a testimony. You have a testimony. Let me ask you this. Who knows it? Some of y'all don't share y'all testimony because before we finish Ephesians, your car halfway down the street. I mean it in love. Y'all know I mean it in love. You haven't shared your testimony. Some of us, we won't listen to people's testimony because, I mean, we now under, you, you, you done. This is why we stress community and we, and we stress serving together, being with one another, because that is how connection takes place. And when the Spirit's power is at work in the church inwardly, we, not only are we transformed as individuals, but we get to connect collectively and share our testimonies. That is how we overcome. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now notice this. I didn't say autobiography. John Stott, I love it. John Stott says a testimony Is not an autobiography. And what is the difference? An autobiography is the account of a person based upon the writing of that person. It's a person's personal account that is written by them. 
When the Holy Spirit works in us, he doesn't give us the power to have an autobiography. He gives us the power to have a testimony. And what is a testimony? A testimony is a personal account of our story that's being written by the power of God. Hallelujah. See, when we share our testimony, it it should point to the power of God at work in us to sustain us, to strengthen us, to transform us, to deliver us, to empower us, to encourage us. At the end of our testimony, people need to listen to our story and be like, man, I don't know how you made it. It had to take an act of God. And you could be like, that's what I've been trying to say the whole time. That's my testimony. That's my story. See, your autobiography, you get the pat on the back. Your testimony, God gets the glory. When the Holy Spirit works in the life of the church, we don't end up with a lot of biographies. We end up with a whole lot of testimonies. Amen. Amen. I I, I ain't going to say that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now y'all want to know what I said. Stop being those. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit power, it, only work, it, it not only works upwardly, it works inwardly. And as it works inwardly, we, we understand that the Holy Spirit's power is not only for my benefit. Do we benefit? Yes, but it's not only for my benefit. That, 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 that there is an outward focus as well. I, I shared this at nine. I'll share it with you. I remember uh, early on when I was passing, I went to a conference and uh, at the round table, uh, we, we were sitting by some other pastors and there was another pastor from Virginia. And he was sharing his testimony with us. And he was just, you know, he was sharing how he was glad to be at the conference, and he was like, "Man, we, it, it's been a rough road for us." Uh, he said, "But, but, but I think I think we I think we're coming out of it. We're doing well." So, you know, we were like, "Well, man, share, you know, share your testimony, share what's happening." And he said, "Well, you know, I've been at this church uh, for a few years, and and it's been real hard. You know, uh, deacons been fighting me a little bit, but 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 you know, I, I stayed the course, and and in prayer, you know, God just showed me what to do. You know, I." I, I just loved and preached to the church. He said, but every day, Monday through Friday, I would go out and I would share Jesus with as many people as I could that day. He said, and eventually, some of those people started coming to church. He said, and then one day the deacons pulled me aside and they said, hey, pastor, you know, uh, I, I forgot to mention that uh, he said his church, uh, by the way, was a small church. It, it, it wasn't really growing um, and then he goes off and he, he starts sharing the gospel with whoever would listen. And some of those people start coming to church. And he said one of the deacons stopped him and said, hey, pastor, so glad, you know, so glad what you're doing. He said, but we, we just need to be mindful of the church we're becoming. And the pastor said, yeah, I, I, I hear that. We're like we're becoming a church that people starting to come to. <laughs> you know, it used to be empty in here. And uh you know, I, I think the deacon was speaking in code a little bit. You know, pastor was reaching people um, in the community that look, didn't look like the people in the church. And, and so there was, a, there was a, a few cultural differences there. I'll say that as palatable as I'll say it. Uh, and so this pastor said, you know, I kept doing what God called me to do. I, I knew God called me to that church. I knew God told me to love and preach to the people, but Monday through Friday, share the gospel with as many people as I, as I could. And the preacher said he kept doing it. He kept doing it. And then one day, the deacon said, well, we're going to call a meeting. The pastor said, okay. And they called a meeting to vote out the pastor. Amen. I love my church too. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so I'm real nosy now. I'm at the table like, man, what happened? You know, <laughs> it's done got juicy, you know. And the pastor said, you know, thank God there were more people at the meeting that I have been leading to Christ <laughs> than the deacons that called the meeting. He said, so 
we voted not to let the deacons vote no more. Amen. <laughs> I said, well, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that plan. That's, <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Now, see, if this pastor had given into the fear of man, if this pastor had stopped relying on the power of the Spirit at work in his own life, he would have never thought, hey, you know what? I might be getting opposition from these group of people, but you know what? God has given me a ministry. God has given me his power. God has given me a testimony, and Monday through Friday, I'm going to share it with whoever will listen. No, he didn't focus on the fear of man. He focused on the fact that the Spirit had filled him and given him a testimony, and he shared it, and look at what God did in the church. Every time I hear and I think of that story, it encourages me. It encourages me because the Spirit's power not only works upward, it not only works inward, but but lastly, this is the last point, it works outward. Yes, being filled with the Spirit creates an outward awareness of people. It creates an outward awareness of people's pain, of, of people's story. It creates an outward awareness of the people around us. We cannot exist in a holy huddle. The people who are filled with the Spirit, and we know it, guess what? They have gone on to impact the world. Yes. Yes. Because the Spirit works outwardly. Yeah, when, when we really have the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said it at the beginning of Acts. He said, when you really have the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Now, when we, when we look at this, look at Peter, verse 32. Look at Peter. It says this, as Peter was traveling from place to place, he also came down to the saints who live in Lydda. Now, notice this. Peter could exist in a place of prominence, privilege, and safety. After all, this is Peter who preached on the day of Pentecost. Peter can exist at the church in Jerusalem in a good, padded, safe position. But what do we see Peter doing full of the Holy Spirit? He is traveling from place to place. And what is he doing there? He is going to the saints. He is going to connect with people. And while he's there, I got to go, while he's there, he sees a man who had been paralyzed. And he says to this man, get up, Jesus Christ heals you. Remember how I said the Holy Spirit power in us works upward. Inward and outward for the purpose of making us more like Jesus and drawing people to Jesus. Peter sounds a lot like Jesus when he looks at a paralyzed man and he says, get up, make your bed. How do you know that, Pastor Nick? Because this is what Jesus does in Mark chapter 2. Now notice this. Peter didn't say, get up, you're healed. Now for three easy payments of $9.99, you can sow into my ministry. And I will send you some water from the Rio Grande. He didn't do that. <laughs> Notice this. At, right as Peter is commanding the healing of this man, Peter is pointing to the source for this man. He says, Jesus Christ heals you. Remember, remember, the Holy Spirit does not draw attention to himself. The Holy Spirit draws attention to Jesus. Amen. And how do you know if a church is full of itself or if it's full of the Holy Spirit? That church will draw attention to Jesus. Amen. I'm not making it up. It's right here in the box. And, and why are you preaching this, Pastor Nick? A brother stopped me in the hall after nine, and he said that was very helpful. And I said, well, praise God, because what we want people to do is we want people to begin to exercise discernment because too long in the church, we haven't exercised discernment. We walk in ignorance and fear. 
No believer needs to be ignorant of the Holy Spirit. No believer needs to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. No believer needs to ignore the power of the Spirit. No, we just need to be able to discern whether or not it is the genuine, authentic Spirit working or if it's a counterfeit. Amen. Because there are churches that get so focused on signs and wonders and ain't nobody being saved and drawn to Jesus. Preach, Pastor Nick. I'm preaching. This, this is the good preaching, too. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's power points people to Jesus, not to my healing line. I know you like to come, but if you come and attend and you never encounter Jesus, the Spirit's not working. And this is why I love at BT Church. At BT Church, we're always going to give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus. At BT Church, every week, you are going to hear a presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you are going to hear an invitation to come and follow Jesus Christ. Because a true work of the Spirit points people to Jesus. Some of y'all think I make this up. I'm not making none of it up. Look, it's right here. It's right here in the Bible. Verse 35, and and I'm, I'm done. Verse 35. So all the people who lived in Lydda and Sharon, they saw him. They saw the man who was paralyzed, who was now healed by the power of God. They saw him, and look at it. They turned to the Lord. Peter didn't draw him to himself. They turn to Jesus. And so in closing, when we look at the Spirit's power, we see that the Spirit's power produces action. Yes. He told the man, make up your bed and walk. The Spirit's power produces action, and that action results in people being drawn to Jesus. <laughs> so I have, in closing, I have a few questions because I, I get it. Some of y'all are like, man, that, well, that sounds good, but how do I know if I am full of the Spirit or full of myself? First question I would like you to consider is this. Number one, is my life focused on Jesus? If the answer to that question Is not, yes, yes, my life is focused on Jesus. If the answer to that question is not yes, then you are not full of the Spirit. You're full of yourself. We are full of ourselves. Jesus said in John 14, when the counselor comes, he's going to testify of me. He's going to remind you of the words that I spoke. He's going to take. What is mine and give it to you. That's what Jesus says about the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit does not want to just draw us into these great ecstatic experiences and we leave void of a solid relationship with Jesus. Is my life focused on Jesus? Here's another question. To consider as you think, am I, am I full of the Spirit or full of myself? Are you selfish? <laughs> like, are, are you selfish? Is life all about you? If it is, you're full of yourself. Here's, here's another question. Am I full of the Spirit or am I full of of myself? Not are you selfish, are you connected? Are you connected to the body of Christ? Are you connected? These are tough questions. We got to honestly do business with them. Are you connected? And if you're disconnected, why? 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 I don't want a lot of people in my business. Okay. 
You don't need a lot of people in your business. You don't know. Get 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 two people in your business. You know, <laughs> somebody else. Oh man, I you know. I just want to come get my good word. I'm not connect. You know, I, the Lord know my heart. Yeah, He know your heart, and He know you disconnected. Right? Hear me. I mean this in love. When the Spirit is at work in the hearts of God's people, it draws God's people closer. Amen. Amen. So are you focused on Jesus? Are you selfish? Are you connected? The answer to those questions will help us figure out if we're full of ourselves or are we full of the Spirit. Because here's here's something about the Spirit according to Scripture. The Spirit cannot be stopped, but in the life of a believer, according to Scripture, the Spirit can be quenched. Spirit can be quenched. And and hear me, we won't stop, we won't stop or limit the power of God. We won't stop or limit the power of the Holy Spirit. But you know what we will stop or limit? We will stop our ability to experience what God wants to do. Isn't that crazy? I, I shared this a little while ago. You can put your son over your eyes and block the sun from impacting your vision, thereby limiting your experience of the sun, but you cannot stop the sun from shining. If we don't surrender and if we quench the Holy Spirit, if we are not focused on Jesus, if we want to live selfish lives like 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 we're all tempted to do. If, if we want to live disconnected lives, that, that's like putting our hands over our eyes to, to, to limit the rays of the sun. It don't stop the sun from shining, but it will limit our experience of it. And here's the thing. I don't want to be a part of a church that, that wants to limit the power of the Spirit working. I'm so glad I don't go to a church that limits the power of the Spirit working. And we have an opportunity to allow the Spirit to work in us upwardly, inwardly, and outwardly for the glory of God. Let's take seriously that opportunity. Amen. And let's allow the Spirit to work in us to make us look more like Jesus and to draw people to Jesus. Amen. That's my Sunday school lesson. I'm done. Look, I'm, I closed my Bible. I ain't got nothing else to say. I do have two invitations, though. As the brothers and sisters, our prayer team, as they come up here right now uh, to the altar, men and women coming, we are ready to pray with you. We're ready. We are ready to go to God on your behalf. That's right. They're coming. You can come now. Come now, men and women. My first invitation is for somebody who is not a follower of Jesus Christ. You know in your heart. You you, you heard the word and you come and you've been blessed, you've been impacted uh, by the powerful music and you know in your heart that you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you're not a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to give you the opportunity right now to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Here, here's what I know. I know that the Spirit's power can transform your life. It turns Saul from a murdering persecutor of Christians to being one of the greatest ambassadors for Christ that the world has ever known. God's power can do just that. And here's what I believe. I believe that God can save anybody. I believe that. You want to know how I know? Because I'm a living testimony. That Jesus still saves, that he still forgives, that he still redeems, that he will 
He will throw your sins into the sea of forgetfulness never to remember. And if you are ready to receive the free gift of God that is only found in Christ Jesus, if you're ready to receive Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask everybody, bow your head, close your eyes. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today confessing that I need you. I'm lost. I need to be found. I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I believe that he died on the cross for my sins, and he rose again from the dead. And today, by faith, I place my trust in Jesus. He is the Lord of my life, and I give him my heart. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me first. My life is yours forever and ever. Amen.